uh, obviously uh, hard to go on the road and beat the 15th, 16th ranked team, whatever they are, uh, uh, when your defense is as bad as ours was today. Um, you know, we played a little harder, for lack of better words, in the second half. Uh, but then all we did was foul uh, in the second half. Um, uh, and then offensively, I mean, if, if you're not going to defend offensively, you better make shots. And uh, we, we, we shot eight for 19 from the line, eight for 28 from the three, 27 for 70 from the, from, you know, for the game. Uh, I mean, we, we, we gotta, we gotta figure out a way to fix our, our defense is not good right now. Uh, our defense, uh, I thought we, we played a little better against Texas A&M. It was not good against Florida A&M. It was not good uh, against LSU the other day. And it was definitely not good today. And so uh, we, we got work to do uh, if we, we expect to beat the good teams. Especially, especially on the road. You're not outscoring good teams on the road. You better you better defend them. David with the first one. Frank, uh, you, you've mentioned before that the point guard play has been kind of a concern. Um, just what has been the main issue with that spot? It just seemed like no matter who you guys try there, there's been some kind of issue keeping them from really getting into a groove. Uh, just uh, some guys are passive. Not, not don't don't play very aggressive. Uh, other guys, uh, you know, it, it just it, we're 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 just not good at the point guard right now. It's just I, I wish there was something better I can say. And um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we we you go on the road, uh, like I said, to play a real good basketball team. Um, that's experienced. They don't have freshmen. They're old guys, and they've been around the block, so they they know what the deal is. They know how hard they got to play when they play us. They understand all that, so they come out and do it, and they beat us on every pass, on every cut. Uh, then our point guards, we we can't. I'm trying to run. They're trying to deny, so I'm trying to run back cut stuff, and I can't back cut them because the guy back cutting doesn't cut strong enough. And and then the guy with the ball, if they're denying the gaps are wide open, we can't beat anyone off the dribble and. And, you know, that's that's what I mean by being passive. Uh, so then it, cre it means structure. We got to make sure that we play with tremendous structure. And then when we got open threes, you got to make them. And we're all for the day and all the above what I just explained from the point guard spot. Colin? Yeah, Frank, I guess just offensively speaking, what was the biggest issue tonight? You kind of touched on it. Um, and what do you feel like? Were you happy with their team's shot selection, especially in the first half tonight? Yeah, I, 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 I really didn't mind some of the shots we took. Um, uh, Got to make them, man. I mean, the last seven minutes at LSU, we don't score a basket. You know, you're not going to win. We, we started the game today, first five minutes, we didn't score a basket. And, and you know, you, at the end of the day, you got we got to defend better. We're not defending well right now. We got to defend better. And then when we take shots, you got to make them. A.J. Lawson's going to have to go something better than two for nine. Jermaine Cousinard's going to have to do something better than two for 12. You know, uh, it, it just it, – it, and then they're both one for six from the three-point line. I mean, if that's how those guys are going to score, then we can't play fast, and I got to reevaluate how we're playing and slow the game down because we don't need to be taking so many shots if we're not going to make more of them. And that's, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty simple deal. Michael and Anna. Uh, Frank, obviously, uh, you got a big contribution from Trey Anderson off the bench today. Just curious, just, you know, what did you see out of him? What have you seen out of him over this over the course of this year? And, and uh, you know, just how happy were you for him for his performance today? Yeah, I, I mean, I towards the end of last year, he was really starting to practice a lot better. And I and uh, I, I the season ended. The one thing I felt I did a poor job is is trying to figure out a way to utilize him um, to, to, to help us. And then this year started, and um, I should have moved him to the four spot from the beginning of the year, but I, I kind of left him out at the three. And he's better suited to play at the four right now. And, um, and we've made a decision to play, you know, four perimeter guys as much as possible right now. Um, and so he's he's gotten a chance to play. And, you know, part of it was lack of personnel. 
And to his credit, he's played well every time we've thrown him out there. So now that grows confidence in us. Now he's got to get better defensively. Like, you know, he a lot of ball screen stuff, he's guarding the screener, he's making the wrong call. And, you know, you guys don't know that, but that's what's happening in the game. So now our ball screen coverage stinks because the guy calling the coverage calls the wrong coverage. So now our defense breaks down. And that was a big problem today. But it, our defensive issues were not Trey Anderson. He's got to get better at that. Our defensive issues were just, we had no, no, uh, we didn't have the fight in the belly that we needed to defend the team like Missouri. John Dell. Right, kind of saying on that topic, how hard is it undermanned, you know, facing a guy like Jeremiah Tillman, who's, you know, over 250 pounds and is experienced in this league? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought when we played small, we battled him. I, you know, when Wilkins was in the game, he got out of the way, gave up four dunks. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, uh, he's going to, he's, he averages 12 and 10 or nine or something like that a game. And he's actually been playing real well for them as of late. Uh, so him playing well is not a surprise. I thought we battled him. I really did. I, I, you know, he's too damn big. At the end of the day, he caught us a couple times and scored over the top of Trey Anderson and Justin, I think. Uh, it wasn't Justin, it was um, uh, Keyshawn Bryant. But at the end of the day, when we were small, we battled him. Wildens is a guy that put up no fight. He, he, he put up zero fight against Tillman today, and that, that was really disappointing. Jacob Phillips? Uh, Coach, so the team came out pretty sloppy tonight. Is rust and fatigue still a factor, and how will the team overcome those issues moving forward through the season? Yeah, I'm not an excuse guy. I mean, we've been that we we've been dealt a certain hand, and it's up to us to uh, to to you know deal with it and 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 just take advantage of the opportunities that we got and. You know, we're not it's sitting around complaining because we practice five times in seven weeks. That's not fixing a problem. That's just giving us a reason to accept not doing things the right way. Uh, we've got guys that have been around. We, we've got to man up. We've got to, uh, you know, we got to get in a little bit better shape. We're not, we're not uh, in the kind of shape we need to be in right now. And that comes from lack of, uh, of uh, just practice, running, lifting, everything that you do on a regular basis. Uh, there we do have to figure out a way to get better. But uh, all the other stuff is we we play real good teams. I mean, if we're going to sit around and, and worry about the fact that we didn't practice much the last seven weeks, we're going to keep losing. We've created a safety net to accept losing. And and that's not part of my DNA. That's not the uh, – it, it's not the way I go about things, and it's definitely not the way I want our team to talk and think. Go back to David. Frank, will Alonzo Frank be back this year? Yeah, I mean, David, all those things are things that we're dealing with right now. And uh, whenever the time is appropriate to make those kind of decisions, uh, we will. Colin? Yeah, Frank, I guess at LSU and, and kind of tonight, too, you guys – when LSU took the lead in tonight, you kind of cut it to 10 a couple of times, but never could make that run. Do you feel like you guys right now have a closer on this team where you can go to in the final 10, five minutes of a game and say, we need a bucket and, and he can get it for you? Do you feel like you have that right now? Uh, I mean, I, I, I think we got three or four different guys that we can run a play and get them a shot. Uh, you know, we've got to be better uh, from an execution standpoint because Missouri's very good defensively. So they're the end are very physical. So they don't get out of the way. So your cuts and your screens have to be really good. We're not there right now. Um, and then secondly is when guys get opportunities, they, they got to convert. Yeah. You can't shoot eight for 19 from the foul line. Like you're talking about, we're down 10 and we've missed 10 free throws, uh, you know, and it, it, you know, you're not going to make all 10 to tie the game, but maybe you make five or six of those. And now you're in a different place. And, and, and then, you know, if we're not going to, if we're not going to be a high free throw attempt team, which I don't know if this team will be because we play too many guards and our guards, uh, 
dribble driving the ball is not something that we're very good at right now. We give in to contact. We got to, we don't like Missouri plays through contact. When we drive the ball from the guard spot, we give in to contact. Uh, so there's not a foul. Uh, so if we're not going to, if we're not going to be a team that, that, that can, you know, like the Cinderish team and those guys that we shoot 35 free throws a game, if we're not going to have that, then we got to shoot the three at a high percentage. If we, we, you know, LSU, you know, we made threes early in the game, then we never made any more threes. At Texas A&M, what popped the game open? We made threes in the second half. You know, this game here today, we couldn't make threes. I mean, you know, it's uh, uh, TJ Moss made two threes early, and, you know, and then Justin, you know, made a couple threes, and then everyone else was just bad from the three-point line. And, uh, you know, we, we, we got to – we got to – we got to – you got to – as a player, you have to impact the game. You can't play a game and your stat line is straight zeros, like no rebounds, no steals, no assists, no blocks, not, uh, zero free throw attempts, zero. The, if that's your stat line, then you're not very impactful as a player. Um, and when you don't impact the game in those ways, then you better make a high percentage of your shots. And when you don't do either, then it's hard to win as a basketball team. And right now we got some guys that are – you know, that, that got to figure out a way to get to the foul line. And then number two, if they're not going to shoot free throws, then, you know, the few we shoot, we got to make, we can't miss 13 of them. And, and then we got to make threes. And if we don't, it's going to be, it's going to be a struggle until we don't defend better. All right. We got a couple questions left in the queue here. So we'll get to those and then we'll let coach get out of here. Uh, Michael and Anna. Um, these last two games, uh, you know, Keyshawn, since he's come back, it seems like he's playing with a lot of confidence. And, you know, tonight obviously had a couple of those dunks and a couple of mid-range jumpers too. Just curious what you've seen out of him and if, you know, you think he might possibly be able to work back into the, you know, the starting five. Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't even know about starting five right now. I mean, at the end of the day, he's going to play starter minutes, whether he starts or does not. I, I got no idea. Uh, but Keyshawn had a real good – he finished last year with a bang. He had a great preseason this year. And, and then we started, you know, playing those games we played before we got shut down after the Houston game. And he just didn't play great, and he kind of felt down on himself because he didn't play as good as he needed to. And, you know, and bottom line, we played a matchup zone a team in Tulsa, which is – Keyshawn doesn't do great against matchup zones because now that negates his cutting and it makes him more of a perimeter shooter. And he got frustrated. So he didn't, he didn't go get other shots that he could have gotten. Uh, and then at Houston, he just had a bad day. Houston just, they, 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 they're real good defensively and didn't give him anything easy. And, and, and he just didn't have a very good day, but, but I'm, I'm really happy. He's ever since he, uh, uh, you know, got back into practice and, and started moving around and stuff. He's continued to play better and better. His voice is probably one of the loudest voices on the team right now uh, from an understanding and, 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 and demanding that people do certain things. And, uh, you know, we need him to keep playing at a high level. Phil Cornblue with the last question. Yeah, Frank, Lawson has been so good for you all season. Uh, did you, what did you see tonight with him, uh, with his struggles? Just Was it anything with him or something they were doing defensively? Missouri's real good defensively, and they're very physical. And he, he didn't play like a guy that was willing to deal with the physicality of the game. Uh, that's just what Missouri is. You know, Houston kind of bothered him the same way. Uh, Missouri is, is very aggressive with their, their perimeter defense. And, um, you know, our point guard play has not been very good right now. So then that means that it's hard to run certain plays. When you don't practice, it's hard to run certain plays. And then we're, we're trying to space them so we can cut them and drive them. And, and he just didn't do a very good job. I thought he quick shot some threes that, you know, he just quick shot them just to shoot them. Uh, and that doesn't help anybody. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, he's been pretty good and he just didn't play well today. And if we, we don't get better games from him and Jermaine Cousinard uh, on the road, it's going to be hard to win these kind of games. AJ had an awesome first half at LSU, and then he disappeared the second half. Jermaine didn't play well at LSU, so we couldn't close the game out. Well, we go on the road today and play another top 20 team and a lot of the same deals, and we need those two guys to – it's not calling players out. It's just the bottom line. We want to win. Like, 
when Sendarius and Dwayne Notice or Sendarius and PJ were on our team, if those two guys played well, we we're going to win. If they didn't play well, it's going to be a struggle. Well, AJ Lawson, Jermaine Cousinard play well. It gives us a chance to win. If they don't, it's going to be a struggle.